Chasing Latitude. Ladies and gentlemen, right before we jump into this, head on over to my website at chasinglatitudes.com and sign up for my newsletter, and I will send you my new ebook 100% free. Today, we continue the process on my journey back to the water, and I'm bringing you along to show you exactly how I go about buying a new to me, fancy dancy used sailboat. Now, if you have not seen the previous video where I list out all of my criteria, I will link it down below and I will wind up putting them in a playlist just for you. But to cover some very basic criteria, I am looking for a vessel no more than $100,000. A vessel no more than 20 years old. And a vessel that is under 40 feet in length. Now, I will be financing a large portion of this vessel, hence the need to keep it under $100,000. And I always go for a vessel that is 20 years old or newer, as I am not looking to bite right into a major refit on any vessel. Ladies and gentlemen, today is the day we are going to take a look at what might be my perfect vessel, the Oceanus 38.1. Now, to cover some brief specs, she does come in with an amazing length at the waterline of 35.17 feet. Now, comparatively speaking, these 38-foot vessels, it's really difficult to get a length at the waterline that is that large and she only has a length overall of 37.73 feet so we have a very minimal difference between our length at the waterline versus length overall and that's something that i constantly bring up in my videos as being incredibly important for your long-term comfort as well as limiting your wasted livable space on board your vessel. A lot of times you'll bump into these vessels that have these extreme length at the waterline versus length overall difference. What happens there is you wind up with a bunch of unusable forward deck space. A great example of exactly what I'm talking about would be the Pacific Seacraft 40. Now this vessel comes in with a length at the waterline of only 31.25 feet, but a huge length overall at 42.16 feet. And on this vessel, that's not additional usable deck space as the Pacific Seacraft 40's deck is incredibly cluttered and offers almost no usable deck space on board. You combine that with this huge difference in length at the waterline versus length overall, and all all you've done is pay a bunch more money in running costs as well as your slip fees. It's just not a wise use of your money investing into a sailboat like that. Continuing on, we have a 13.09 foot beam. That is absolutely huge for a vessel of 38 foot length overall. It's enormous, ladies and gentlemen. Now, as far as drafts go, we have several different options here, with the maximum draft being the 6.83 footer. The Oceanus 38.1 does come with the shoal draft option, a deep draft option, as well as a swing keel option. Now for me, I'm gonna opt for the shoal draft version as being down here in the Caribbean, it fits all of my needs and is more than capable of doing exactly what I need it to do. We do, however, bump into some issues as, in typical newer Beneteau fashion, we only have a fuel tank of 34 gallons. That is a sad state of affairs creating a very sad day indeed. So I'm going to need to add an additional fuel tank into this vessel to make it work for me. As far as the water tank goes, she's got a small water tank of 34 gallons as well, but that's not such a big issue as I'll just be installing a very nice water maker on board. 
Now moving right on to the interior of the 38.1, she does have a wide variety of layouts and I do absolutely love what they've done here. Now as far as the forward V-berth entryway goes, they have completely enlarged that to make a far wider opening. Now unfortunately it's not like the Oceanus 38 or the 35 where it's a completely removable bulkhead, however I do really like that much wider interest way into the v-birth and for me it doesn't feel quite so claustrophobic as you'll find on traditional entryways to the forward v-birth she also comes in a wide variety of different layouts here as you can see on screen she has the three cabin one head long galley layout that is fairly common on several vessels today in the three cabin market she also has, as you can see here, a three cabin, one head with the L-shaped galley. Now for me personally, I always prefer the L-shaped galley over the long galley. She also comes in the two cabin, one head with the long shaped galley. Now this is also a wet head. She also has a two cabin, one head version with a separate stand up shower, however, for some reason, Beneteau made this the long galley. But have no fear. Regardless of what it says on their website, you can actually get the Beneteau Oceanus 38.1 with the L-shaped galley, two cabin, one head version, and a separate stand-up shower. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, exactly what I'm looking for. Now let's go ahead and take a walk on this vessel and see what you think. So here we are at the rear of the vessel and as you can see it has an incredibly nice swim platform that runs almost the entire width of the vessel. In addition to that, as shown here, there is a large life raft stowage compartment right here at the stern of the vessel. Now both of the helm station seats are completely foldable. They're not really retractable, but they will fold up and out of the way, just like shown here. And that is a fantastic feature on the vessel. Now, as you can see here, it can come with a factory installed arch, which is a fantastic feature as it removes all of your lines from the cockpit area on the vessel, creating a very nice, unencumbered, large outdoor cockpit, as well as it provides shelter from inclement weather while sailing. Now, as we move further forward, they can come with the in-mast furler. This is push button sailing, ladies and gentlemen, makes things incredibly easy as long as you take care of your sails and your in-mast furler. Now, unfortunately, right at the moment, I do not have any of the two cabin interior to be able to show you as I'm currently fighting a nonsensical copyright issue with YouTube from yesterday's video. So if you've noticed, yes, this is a re-upload of most of yesterday's video. However, there was some footage in there that kind of having some issues with YouTube about. So what does everybody think of the Oceanus 38.1? As far as my needs and my criteria, let me know in the comments down below what you think and compare it to the other vessels I've covered so far in this series on buying my new to me fancy dancy sailboat. Now, if you do need help getting on the water sooner than later, head on over to my website at chasinglatitudes.com, sign up for a consulting package, come join me on the members area and let's get your path back on the water set up in the most cost effective efficient and time efficient manner. Also consider joining my patron for only $10 a month. You do get full access to my members area where I'm available to chat almost 24 seven. Thank you so much for watching. Hit my website, sign up for the newsletter, get a free copy of my new ebook, leave a comment down below and I will see you on the next video.